Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. Today we're going to be talking about Miller v. Bonta, which is a challenge to California's so-called assault weapons ban. The case is currently sitting in front of Judge Roger T. Benitez, also known as St. Benitez to people in California because of his positive role in Freedom Week. Now, Judge Benitez asked the defendants, being California and the California Attorney General, to provide some type of historical analog or historical evidence proving that a similar law to California's current ban has existed in our nation's history, going back from the ratification of the Second Amendment on up to the Reconstruction era around 1868 or so. Now, California has to go back in history. They have to find something that's similar to the current ban. They have to find out whether or not it was upheld or it was overturned, and then they have to provide that evidence to Judge Benitez proving that it is constitutional to have a ban like this. If they can't find that evidence, then it's automatically considered unconstitutional. Now, this would have big effects if they can't find anything in history to the rest of the country, because currently as we sit, we have nine different states across this country that have a similar ban. And so again, if California, who is notorious for bans like this, can't find any type of historical analog, then nobody else is gonna be able to find it either, because California wants to uphold this as bad as you could possibly imagine. So again, under Bruin, if California can't provide that proof, then that's it, it's unconstitutional. Well, California came back with their homework and uh, what they found is absolutely cringeworthy and has nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing to do with the current ban. And I think uh, you guys might find at least some of it kind of humorous. This channel is proud to be sponsored by the USCCA, absolutely one of the best resources and best memberships you could ever have in your wallet. They will teach you how to respond before and after a self-defense incident. They have a 24-7 emergency hotline. They will get somebody out there to take care of you and to speak for you, a lawyer of your choice. So definitely worth taking a look at the USCCA. With your membership, you get that self-defense liability insurance as well. So check them out down below. Let's get to it. Now, the one that I find just totally laughable, which it still has absolutely nothing to do with the current ban, is a law from 1791 out of the state of New Jersey, where New Jersey banned the use, not the possession, not the sale or transfer, but the use of trap guns. That would be something that is activated by a rope or a string or something like that, right? For, for a trap, essentially. So if you were, you know, if it was actuated, by a string or something else, then it was banned in New Jersey under this law in 1791. That is one of their historical analogs that they're using to uphold the current ban. It doesn't make sense at all, but apparently that's one of the best things that they could come up with. Now, there was another one from 1866 out of New York that banned the use or concealment of billy clubs, metal knuckles, Dirk's daggers, and things like that, uh, but it says absolutely nowhere in New York's law that it banned the sale, manufacture, import, or transportation of those items. It was simply the use in this, you know, in public, In it was the use or concealment of those things. So while California is trying to prove that there is some type of historical relevance to the current law, again, the best that they come up with is you can't conceal it in a certain state, a certain thing, and uh, you couldn't use it in a certain place or a certain time. That seems to be all they've really found. And we're talking about the best of the best here. This is the best that they found as far as, you know, historical proof goes. They found no historical proof that a band like theirs, uh, even kind of close, existed in the past. You know, it, it just, it doesn't exist. And so they had to dig up these things that are irrelevant and completely off topic, totally off base, and they had to present those just so they, they could essentially have something, right? It's almost like to do something. We just got to do something. Well, they just did something. That's all they did. They found some really obscure old laws that don't pertain to the current law at hand, and they presented those forward. Well, what do you think Benitez is going to do when he looks at these? He's going to have the same exact reaction that you guys are having. He's going to have the same exact reaction that I had. It's not going to change his mind whatsoever. He's already ruled on this case once. And what did he do? He ruled there was unconstitutional the first time. He used text history and tradition the first time he came up with his, uh, his first order. So nothing's going to change that. Again, he's still using text history and tradition. And there's nothing in history that supports this current ban. So I see Benitez as upholding his previous uh, ruling, which is that it's unconstitutional. They're going to bring it back to the Supreme Court. 
or excuse me, the Ninth Circuit Court, and if they show stuff like this to the Ninth Circuit, even though the Ninth Circuit has never actually ruled in our favor, I believe the last 50 laws uh, that have gone through the Ninth Circuit have all gone against us and for the state, but regardless, there's no way that they can ignore something like this. It's unconstitutional under Bruin, it's unconstitutional under Heller, it's just unconstitutional to begin with. So there is no way that the uh, Ninth Circuit can get around uh, this one right here with, you know, they, they have to overturn it basically, or, or it's going to go up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's going to laugh and basically overturn it themselves. So that's the argument that California's come up with. It's ridiculous. Like I said, it's laughable. It's cringeworthy. It's terrible, but it's totally, totally 100% irrelevant. So if you live in California, this is what I would do. I would get one of those five gallon water jugs, you know, the kind that uh, like sparklets delivers, right? And I would put some duct tape over it. That's what my dad used to do. He'd cut a hole right in the middle of that. Any extra change he had, he would go ahead and put it in there. Dimes, pennies, quarters, nickels, you know, extra dollar, five dollars that he had. And he would let that bucket fill up. I would let your buckets fill up because you're saving for something. And I think that something's going to be coming around fairly soon. And it's better to have the bucket mostly full so you can be prepared for it. That's what I'd do in California because I think Bonta... I think he's got a pretty big loss coming to him pretty soon. So anyway, we'll pay more attention to this and pay close attention to this as it moves its way on through. But again, I'm, I'm seeing some pretty favorable outcomes in our future here. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.